here we are in sunny Putney at the Half Moon Fay New, legendary Fay New. Later tonight, Deborah Bonham is playing here to promote a new album, Spirit, which is out on Spectre Records right now on download. It's out on CD on April the 28th and good old final, May the 26th. Hi Deborah, how are you? I'm fine, Mark, thank you. Pleasure to be here. And you're looking lovely as well. Well done. Oh, so are you. Thank you. <laughs> Focus on me. <laughs> I am, I'm focusing on you. And uh, brand new album, Spirit, and uh, what can we read into the album title? Um, well, that's a sort of, that's a question. <laughs> uh, basically, before I, I, I arranged to, to make the album, all through, I, I went, took my mom to see uh, Robert Plant and the Band of Joy up in um, Birmingham. And I'd already been talking to my nephew Jason about doing the drums for the, the album because he's just the best. And uh, no nepotism there, but he's <laughs> he well, is, he's amongst the best. I think you can is, safely he's say that. <laughs> absolutely the best. So, um, but we couldn't get it together. So it became, you know, he was over in the states. He was busy doing his projects and lots of things. So um, anyway, cut long story short, I went up to see Robert. We took my mom playing up at the Birmingham Symphony Hall with Band of Joy. And um, before I got up there, I had a little um, an, e an email the drummer Marco Giovino who um, sent it to who it may concern because I think he thought I'd had lo I got lots and lots of uh, you know people and PAs and, <laughs> and everything yeah. and I certainly hadn't but anyway he sent this email saying I'm a big fan and I'd like to meet Deborah afterwards and I thought Ooh, okay drummer, drummer. <laughs> so uh, when I saw the show the show was absolutely brilliant blew me away and the drumming backstage afterwards Mom's with Robert, or you know, she's his second mom, or so they were just like off on one. And um, and I got talking to, to Marco, and I asked him if he'd do the drums, and he said yes, which I was thrilled about. And we booked it for you know for him to come over, and then just before his flight, my mom passed away, and um, it was a bad time because she was she was an incredibly special, amazing, amazing. And my best friend, and um, it was at the funeral where Robert looked at me. He could see I was probably going to cancel everything, and he said, "You know, don't do that. Don't cancel it because Marco's coming over. He's a great guy. Um, you're going to love it, and your mom wouldn't want that." He said, "Just take all that energy, that passion, that emotion, that spirit, and bring it to the album." And so that's what I did, and then you know it took an awful lot to get through it, and I guess that's, that's the back the longest I've yeah. ever talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you just asked me how it came yeah. to be spirit. That's why. Well, you know, bad things do happen to everyone, and unfortunately, none of us are immortal. None of us are here forever. And yeah. you, you know, and people do live on within us, don't they? And, Absolutely. Um, use their energy and, so, and, so that's and turn it into happened. a positive light. And I, I, I went ahead with it. And um, it was only when we were trying to decide the title, it, there was just no other title mm. for it. It was always going to be spirit because it was her spirit, the spirit it took to get through my family's spirit, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're all... And, and fair enough, like, I've, I've seen you in concert a few times and you do sort of mention, you know, you, sort of, you, you talk about your brother and... Um, you do say, you've actually said on stage that you, you do feel that they are, they are here with us and I you do. will get to meet each other again one day. I do, and I think... Um, Basically, I found it, my music, and certainly playing live and talking about that has been real cathartic for me because having lost all my family, both my, both my brothers, um, my, my brother Michael was only 49, so that was a massive, massive shock. Um, and we never got over John, so, and then mom and dad. And so for me to, to get through my life, mm -hmm really is about my band, who are my, my greatest friends. Uh, my manager, of course, Mr. Dave Hill. And not forgetting all the fans that love you. And all the fans, oh gosh, <laughs> yeah, no, I never forget that, <laughs> never, ever. And so, yeah, um, it, it's, it's a great way for me to get through it all by talking yeah. about it and meeting people that it's happened to them. Of course, you know? yeah. I'm not, I'm not. I'm and what, what advice here. can you give to people who've been in the same situation as you? Say again? What advice can you give to people who've been in the same sort of situation? Um, it's, it's very difficult, but I, I do think talking about it mm -hmm. works. Speaking to people who have gone through it and surrounding yourself with, with good friends and, and good people and living each moment because that's what I've learned. I, I really do live my life good, I'll be and I enjoy it. Um, there's bad days. There's always going to be bad days. 
this. But as long as there are days, I just think if I have a bad day, I, I sort of hope that the next day is going to be a good one. And it, it, it normally always is. And animals, of course, dogs and horses. Yeah, we'll get onto that in a second. <laughs> and, uh, let's carry on talking about the album. And uh, you just mentioned Robert Plant, and um, you've actually gotten to guess a new album. And it, I know. it's quite unique, actually, because it's not singing, it's actually playing the harmonica. I, <laughs> so, I, did, I didn't that. have enough guts to ask him to sing. <laughs> wanted him to sing. Actually, you know what, I thought maybe I sounded a bit rude asking for just harmonica. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in hindsight, I hope he didn't think anything yeah. like that. No, I, I mean... Well, you might have some future living for him, you know, if he gets a bit short, he's a bit of busking now. <laughs> so. Well, at the time, um, we, we did this song, you know, and it was, um, it just had this great groove, and, it, and Marco laid this groove down, and I just couldn't hear a guitar solo. Um, as much as we love Pete's guitar, yeah. it was like, no, not another one. But no, because we just couldn't hear one. Yeah. And everybody said, what can you hear? And it was like harmonica. And then it was like, okay, who, you know, who are we going to get? And I, there's only one guy that I just love his harmonica playing, and that's Robert. Well, oh, yeah, it's and quite so fun. What I feels. was absolutely thrilled. I'm probably going a bit red because I, I still can't <laughs> believe he's on there. Oh, know? it's great, yes. And, um, there's some other great songs on the album. It's, it's full of good tracks like Feel So Alive, Spirit and Me, and um, Pain Birds. It's actually a cover version, I believe. It is. In fact, um, pretty much, uh, you know, on the last album I did one cover, cover um, on the old hide I did one cover, and I just wanted to do a cover. And this was a, a song by um, um, Swapper Horse, and a guy who wrote it was Mark Linkus, and he'd gone through an awful lot of shit in his life really if I'm allowed to say that and um, I just related to the song I just totally you know those pain birds coming around again and it was just it when I heard Sparkle Horse do it it just I just loved it and I thought yeah that's you've done a very good version actually you sort of made it your well, own well I, I have to give total credit to Glenn Skinner the yeah. Yeah, co-producer with me he, he he played it to me and said I think this is what you should do and I listened to it and I went oh my goodness Sparkle Horse yes 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 there's another, another song on there, Killing Field, just touches on like, the dark history of Cambodia. And, um, Absolutely. Is that specifically about Cambodia or just Absolutely. sort of... Uh, like, no, it's about the Khmer Rouge and, and all of uh, that. I mean, how that came about was um, really, it must have been late 70s, and uh, John did a concert in the, at the Albert Hall right, yeah. with the lads for Rock for Campuchia. And, um, and, Paul McCartney joined and a host of people in an absolutely amazing concert. And um, the whole situation that was happening with the Khmer Rouge and the amount of people that were being killed, I mean, there was some... About 1.7 million, I think. Yeah, yeah nearly 2 million people or so. It was just uh, horrific. And it affected John. And he ended up um, sponsoring, got involved in sponsoring children out there and everything. Oh. And I, it just... I, you know, I read up all about it then to find out what was going on, and it, it just affected me that, you know, I, I'm living in this world that is, mm. I'm so blessed, and you know, in a democratic society. In fact, I've just mentioned like your hard times in your life, but obviously people out there really had a lot worse. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know. know, that's exactly it, and it just it affected me. And I, I wrote the song some years ago, and didn't do anything with it, and then when. I wanted to do this spirit album, and because the whole album is about it's it is about family, it is about spirit, it's about everything that's touched me in my life, I guess. Even down to the track that like you said, "Feel So Alive," is is about trying to feel like that now. Um, Killing Fields, I wanted to bring into it because it took me back to a time that I, I never want to forget how blessed I am, and that song always reminds me that there's. The atrocities that happen, in the, I mean, it's happening now with Syria, mm. and you know, it's so yeah, there that's you go. What that's about. And yeah, moving on, you actually you're off to France, I believe, at the weekend. But um, it sounds great actually that Libar, Libicardi, I was like, I said, a festival yes. alcohol the whole time. Libicardi, Calac, and Brittany. For, you're you're doing a, a French interview, and the reason we're doing it is you've actually recorded two songs in French. I have, but but only I'm in English as well. Take me down and fly the two singles. You've done them in French as well. And yeah, give me excuse my English. French, you moi, and <laughs> met a la <le> fella. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's not bad. <laughs> oh, mercy for <laughs> Not bad for Putney. Um, 
Yeah. So tell us a quick pronunciation. <laughs> it's Guidemois Montvolé. And uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled how this has all come about. And it, actually, it's uh, a story I've been telling of, of late because um, John really did not want me to go into music. And probably, and, well, not probably, I, I totally get that now, completely. But back in the late 70s, you know, you can imagine what it was like for Led Zeppelin. Mm. And um, I just remember telling him, <laughs> he asked me, because I, I stuck it at school and I did really, really well and, you know, did my O-levels and this, that and the other. And he asked me the one day, he said, so what, what are you thinking about doing, you know, thinking vet or a lawyer or something, you know. And I, I, mean, I had to whisper to him because I was so nervous of telling him. And I well, just, he answered back to you in French, that's what you learned. <laughs> no, well it, could, well, it may as well have been French. Some of the stuff that came out, he wasn't very pleased. And it was like, no, I don't want you, you know. And he, because he was my big brother, he had an, a fundamental effect on, on my life. So, you know, I, I would take notice of that. And of course, my parents wanted me to do well at school. So I stuck it out and I, I did French and Spanish. and. Uh, and then joined a rock band. <laughs> and it was, that's what that's about. Again, yeah. spirit, it was always going to happen. Well, well, fair enough, like when you was younger, you lived at this sort of, sort of a legendary house, the old, um, the the old, old Hyde. Hyde. Yeah. And um, when you and Jason, was John's son's your nephew, and um, you actually recorded together in your young we age. We did, yeah. we did, yeah. Well, I mean, we did loads together, uh, me and Jace. Um, we had to cut out the rustling from the drum kit, though, because he always had packs of, <laughs> packs of jelly babies. <laughs> and uh, what was his other favourite? Uh, old Maltesers, he still loves those, actually. <laughs> Bless him. So, yeah, it was... Um, have you still got hold of these little recordings at home? Yes, I have. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, and I'm holding on I'll to bet. <laughs> Jason sounds great. I sound about 10, but he's still got it then, you know, yeah. got it going on. And uh, let's talk about your live performances. When you, when you perform live, you actually perform barefoot most of the time. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Um, probably because I'm worried about falling over in heels. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, um, it's very grounding for me. And I just feel, I don't want to have to think of anything when I'm singing. So, I, you know, if I'm worried about shoes or, um, wardrobe malfunctions, all sorts of things. It just takes the focus off getting in the zone. Mm. So I just decided the one time, I mean, I don't wear high heels, I just can't. I, yeah. I look at absolute, if I try and walk in high heels, it's hysterical. <laughs> and so I'm, <laughs> so, um, you know, I've been barefoot for years, you know, and I, I walk around the house barefoot, but that's where Good. I, I like to And um, I saw a fantastic concert last year, obviously it was Paul Rogers. It's like a little yes. charity concert you support with Paul Rogers, and you also joined him on stage as well for a yes. great version of OI Reps. Oh, and, um, yeah. That's why I like a horse charity, something you're very strongly involved with. Can you yes. tell us more about that? Um, well, it's all about uh, rescuing um, and, and rehabilitating ex race horses um, because about 5,000 of them a year come out of racing, and there's nowhere for them to go. And we keep breeding them and breeding them, and all of a sudden, there's a two or three year old, if they can't run, they're. Mm. they're what are we going to do with them? So, and they're quite volatile creatures, thoroughbreds, and that's why I love them. They've got, oh, they've got something incredibly special. And I used to, I mean, I'm a keen horse person, so uh, that's why I got involved with that. And I brought Paul Rogers in to uh, his, his wife as well, Cynthia, who they just... It's not you two go back a long way. Oh, yeah. Well, they just absolutely love animals, and, and we got involved with um, a charity in Scotland called Willows. Way that we can sort of raise money for them is by doing concerts, you know. So, course, oh, so you're, you're a big animal lover, and um, what's pardon the pun, what side of the fence do you stand on? Are, are you a fan of the Grand National Horse Racing yourself, or are you totally against it? Um, that's a real tough one because um, I am a, I'm against it, you know, yeah. in my heart. I, I have to be politically correct because I'm trying to rescue ex race horses, I want to work with trainers, mm. I want to work with owners. So if I start going around saying to them, you know, we don't want racing, we don't want this, that's never going to happen because it's a multi-million mm. business, you know, 
it's never going to we're never going to stop. And it's not just in England either. So. No, it's yeah. worldwide. Yeah. So the only way that you can you can work with people is to to be on their side and, and, and try and make it safer and better and bring in more horse welfare issues and and work it that way. So. I try and leave my own personal feelings out of it. But would you, would you say with like your input, and not just you, but other people as well, do you think that the cow horses and horse racing is better because of that? I uh, think so. Oh, God, no, I, I, without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, you know, the, the more stringent, the more... The, and I think it, that's across the board with anything, really. The more people voice, it's Fox Populi, you know, yeah. the, more, the more people voice their opinions, the more people have to sit up and take notice yeah. and you know that's what we're trying to do you don't want to do it in a way that you alienate the racing industry because that's not the way forward and so you know um, we try very hard to work with them and there's some great great owners and trainers out there so i've got some really good friends who are owner trainers and they're incredible they're ethical uh, the horses are fantastic and they do the right thing by them after they finish racing so that's that's the goal great and let's move back to your music and uh, like what well, to mention your live performances and um you sort of you play some great festivals you know you don't play like the big corporate festivals but you know you, you play like these things at skegness and Butlin, some <laughs> great festivals they really are and um what can you say to people about those sort of festivals i think like, they're amazing. festivals and you got you know uh, I think, well, you can see, I mean, you've been to them, they're, mm. they're sold out. I mean, there are thousands of people there. And I think it caters for a, a niche, you know. I mean, yeah, the, the Glastonbury's, uh, you know, the Tea in the Park, they're all fantastic. But, you know, there's a lot of music there that... Glastonbury, are actually, I think Glastonbury is fantastic because I think they've realised that there are an audience of, let's say, over 25 that want to... That, that love music and I think the kids are loving uh, our, our generation of music that's coming so coming back you know I mean that's why Led Zeppelin still sells it's not all the old fathers playing it anymore they've all got it it's the kids you know and it's important to, to for, for kids to for our generation to, sh to, to bring kids to the gigs I love it when we've got a load of kids at the gig but it's like you do see all ages, you know, and it's yeah. very healthy to see. I, I love that. So, um, and I think I think the the sort of uh, the blues um, the blues rock festivals at uh, Skegness and Minehead and everything, they do cater for that, and it's fantastic. And the sound's great, the stage is great. And you get your weekend. own little apartment. And you get your own room to crash out as well. No tents. No <laughs> so don't, nobody cares if it rains. <laughs> It's, like, it's a great clip of you on YouTube where you're playing in Malta of all places. It's a beautiful scenery. And, uh, yeah. But you know, what, what, what has been your, your favourite gigs you've done in the past? You know, have you, have you played probably, anywhere at uh, Probably that one, I think. And I got that gig, um, as I did with Paul Rogers, I mean, I, you know, I, got, I, I don't jump on that bandwagon. I, that, the Malta show was Robert's show. And um, he didn't even know until I was on stage and he stood outside the stage and he was like, I didn't even know you were coming. And that's not quite true. I met him a couple of days before. Yeah. Um, but, um, but that was spectacular. And there's something great about, you know, getting your own gig and, and being there. And it was just fantastic, the motor show. But then I did the same with uh, Bad Company in Chicago last, yeah. last uh, summer. And um, that was one of my as well. Fantastic. People, people were just great. And obviously there was a special show and before we wrap this interview up, just talk about the Bonham family in, in briefly. And uh, 2007 obviously Les Zeppelin reformed and played this fantastic tribute concert to Armet. And um, obviously it must have been a highly emotional gig for you watching that gig because obviously John's not there but in his place there's Jason. So what kind of emotions were going through your mind on that night? Um, yeah, I think the lead up to it was more more emotional the actual the actual night although i had a, a, a few uh, mishaps when i got there like my ticket was <laughs> i'm not even going to go into don't this. you know who i am <laughs> I, had, I, I left uh, it's a long story anyway the, the bottom line was i couldn't get in and <laughs> so i i took myself to a little bar and then uh, hit pete i think for go for disappearing with the ticket <laughs> <laughs> the video, you know, I went to see it at the cinema. It was fantastic. You didn't actually go to the cinema. You didn't actually see it inside. I did see it. Yeah. Good, I, 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 you did. Yes, of course, I did. Um, uh, and uh, I, the run-up to it was immensely emotional. 
actually the night just seeing Jason play and, and seeing them older they were like the same band but different so it just took on a whole new entity itself you know a whole new a whole new thing which was I, I, I thought was just spectacular I really did and I think everybody's heart was in the mouth you know are they going to be as good at it you know it's been a long time and it was you know quite worth yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know where I got that from but, um, you know, I think everybody was sort of mm. really... So I was fortunate, I was there myself, and it's just at the end when Jason did that little drum solo at the end, and the Jimmy, John, and yes. Robert all looked at him, and it's like, job done, he, it, he was the star of the night. Yeah. You know, Jason, I don't know how he did it. Mm. I mean, I, I think that's why I, I lost emotion about John and everything, because I was just focusing on Jace. It was mm. like, oh, come on, Jason. And, and I knew, yes, of course I yeah. knew he was going to do it. Of course he was. But that's a big, tall order, you know. He's a mm. he's a he's a good lad, you know. He got up there and he, he did us all well, the bomb name, his dad. Fantastic, so yeah. Proud. With everyone proud. And uh, in your live shows, you, you know, we do do rock and roll. That's like an encore. Yeah, I mean, we've, I, I don't know why I, that just sort of came about. And I think it. I think the first time I did it was with Jason, and um, I think it was, you know, basically when you go out there, especially with a like for me as a, as a Bonham and I, I do all my own material and people don't know it so if I'm in a big crowd a uh, big audience and they they absolutely follow me and, and we go down a storm or whatever it's just a little thank you really mm. you know I, I sort of that's how we, we ended up doing it and now we sort of seem to do it quite quite a bit but um, well most shows we, yeah, yeah. we do just put that in there. only if we get an encore <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you get an encore yeah, tonight <laughs> Sometimes you have slept in um, Battle of Evermore, which is a, you do a fantastic version of that. Yeah, no, I love that. I absolutely love that song. It's not um, quite a focus on the uh, You know, I, I do love doing that. I'd rather, I would rather do that. Uh, I just love it. But, um, gee, who I sing it with gets a bit panicked. <laughs> Especially when I keep telling him that he hasn't got the right hair for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but he just looks at me and says, okay, Deb, I've heard this one, you know, can you leave it? All the voice, I have to say, bless him, it's a keyboard player. Deborah Blood, it's been lovely talking to you as oh, always. thank you. The man. album, oh. show the readers it, Spirit, and um, yes. out April the 28th from Final 26, or if you want to download it, yeah, I'm very, you can do I'm that very, right very now. I'm proud of it, so. It is a fantastic album, actually, I was playing this afternoon, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you. I'm looking forward to tonight's show, so Deborah Blood, check you. it out, people. Spirit the album. All the best for the future. Thank Thanks, you. Mark.